ownership or stewardship. I heard this quotation that says, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And it seems to fit very well with Consecration Sunday. Now we'll be hearing about financial stewardship because financial support is one of the ways that we can support God's work in this world. And it is an important part of being a good steward. In the biblical stories about stewards, they are commonly slaves or servants. They're given a responsibility over a task or a piece of property. Think of the uh, three slaves who were given talents, that's money, to be used by their master before he went away on a, uh, to a foreign country on a trip. Well, two of the slaves took the money and they put it to work and they earned additional income on it. When the master returned, he called them good and they were given rewards. They were given responsibilities over twice what they had before. The one who only protected the money uh, by burying it, and he gave it back to the master exactly as he had uh, been entrusted to him, he was condemned by his master, and the little that he had, had was taken away from him. Now it's important to remember that this is given to us as an example of what we're supposed to do. We are to take what we're given by God and put it to use for his good. Okay, so then the question is, what belongs to God and what belongs to us? Do you remember what was in your hands the day you were born? That's right, nothing. See, we may call them possessions. However, the reality is that we, they are only on loan to us because everything, all of creation, belongs to God. Now, we often give a dedication prayer after our offering that says, Of thine own have we given thee, O Lord. But how often do we consider the truth of that statement? How often do we realize that nothing on this earth is ours to keep? How often do we realize that we're only tenants and we're not the owners? When do we admit to ourselves that we are only stewards of God's world? See, Jesus has a lot to say in his many parables about stewards and servants and slaves. Some are bad stewards. Some are good stewards. And we're... Uh, the bad stewards lose their jobs or possessions and sometimes even their lives, whereas the good stewards are rewarded and promoted and they're praised. There's a common beginning to all of the stories about stewards because at the start, all of them are trusted to carry out the commands and wishes of the master. It's by their actions that their hearts are revealed to be either trustworthy or not. See, invariably, the uh, trouble with bad stewards is that they forget who the true owner is. They begin to think that what they manage belongs to them. See, this is a dangerous mindset because mine, 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 that's the little child inside of us. Well, the good steward is always shown as the one who obeys the master's wishes, but it's more than that because the good steward is the one who begins to think like the master to have the same heart as the master, to anticipate what the master wants without having to be told. As Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now all of this brings me to my own story. You see, I know that many people give financially to God's work because they believe in God. And that's certainly not unusual. However, my story about giving is a little bit different. You see, I believe in God because I gave. Yeah, after years of uh, doubt and disbelief, I had been asked bluntly if I believed that Jesus died for me. Well, I started attending church. I listened to the preacher and the Sunday school teacher as they talked about all the promises of God. And my emotions were stirred or as Wesley said, my heart was strangely warmed. Now, it was obvious that these Christians had something that I didn't, and I was drawn to it. But yet, see, my mind was cynical. I, I certainly was too smart to fall for this foolishness, no matter how attractive it was. What I really needed was a 30-day money-back guarantee. I needed some way to try out this God thing. Well, that's when I came across Malachi 3.10, which says, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house, and thus put me to the test. Listen, 
and thus put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing. Really? I could put God to the test? Wow, here was my guarantee. So I took God's challenge, and I started to tithe. And it was not an easy step for me, because I had precious little spare money. See, I thought it was a good week when I still had a little bit of money left before I got the next paycheck. But I quickly learned something. God did not want my spare money. He wanted the first fruits. He wants his 10% right off the top. Okay, so this was his challenge. If I was going to really put him to the test, I had to follow his plan. So I did. I was so surprised to find money left at the end of that first month, I put it aside and I didn't spend it. The next month, I had more money left. Oh, this, doesn't make, this does not make sense. And that is the big lesson that I learned. You see, this God stuff, it does not make sense. Because God's wisdom is foolishness to men. You see, a good steward has that childlike faith that believes what God says he will do. Being a good steward requires an attitude of, and a change in the way we think about our possessions. And I will admit it's not always been easy, and sometimes I've not proven to be as faithful as I want to be. However, God has continued to be faithful to me. So now, here's the question for us. Why does God say, bring the tithes in, that there may be food in my storehouse? Why does God want our tithes? Well, it's not for himself. Certainly, he has it all. It all belongs to him anyway. It's because it's one way that God expresses his love for, his, for us, his children. See, it gives us a chance to share, to be in partnership with the Almighty. Remember, God does not need our money. He does, however, want us to be good stewards and to share in the joy of giving. For giving is godlike. Here ends the lesson.